Today, I am going to be making my first game using C++. And well, I am scared, considering the last C++ project took me about a month. Huh. <laughs> okay, so for this project, I am going to be using something called S2D, and a bit of OpenGL, OpenAL, and FreeGLUT. Basically, this framework means that the project won't take me years to complete, and also makes it so much easier to get going. Okay, so I created a fresh Visual Studio project and got all the necessary libraries imported. Now when I press this button, a window will open up. And what's cool is I didn't have to program any of that, unlike last time. Okay, so it's now time for the concept of this game. Because unfortunately, an empty window will not make for a good video. And here's what I'm thinking. We take a popular game like Pac-Man, but we make it geese. Goose. Geeses? Maybe it's geese. Huh? You get the point. Okay, so I started by creating this fella in Photoshop, and it's now time to get him set up in the project. So to represent the player, I created this custom structure. And over time, I will add more variables here, but for now, all we need to focus on is this texture 2D. This will allow us to display a texture for the player entity. So all we need to do is create a new instance of the player, and load in the texture we just created. And well, we have a goose. Geese. Ghost? I don't know, someone please tell me what to call this. And as a final thing, I created a function that allows us to move the player about, using WASD. Okay, so to successfully create the Pac-Man game, there is a few fundamentals we will need. This includes, but is not limited to, the level, pellets, cherries, ghosts, and then the menu bullshit we need. Okay, so let's start with the level system. So for this I could create a wall entity and manually place each wall where I want it, but that's time consuming and requires me to figure out the coordinates for each block. So instead let's create a level creator slash loader system that will take just as long, if not longer. Huh. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. We can make it so we create the level in a notepad file, we then load that file in and create the different entities based on what is written in the text file. That way I can easily change the level when needed, and add new things just as easily. I'm also thinking that the text file should have other entities other than the walls too. So things like the player, ghosts, pellets, etc. Okay, so I created this load map function here that will open the file and read through a line by line. And based on the character it gets to, it will increase the entity count for that specific entity. This means when this function has fully run, we'll know how many different walls there are, how many different ghosts, players, pellets, and so forth. Then in another function, it's time to create the map. So all we need to do is loop through the different rows and columns that the map has, and then we just grab all those different entity counts we just had and create however many entities we need. So now I should be able to create some walls in the text file, and by walls I mean spam the hashtag key, and load the project up, and let's take a look. Yeah, there we go, we can see that the level matches the text file, and to be honest, I was actually not expecting it to work because this is the first time I am testing it. Okay, so next up, let's create some pellets, as that seems simple enough. All we need to do is create another entity, create a score system, make the pellets have collisions with the player by checking if the X and Y coordinates overlap, increase the score, delete the entity when the pellet is picked up, run into about 10 different problems, fix those problems, find more problems, and then bam, we're finished. And now the player can collect pellets and increase their score on the side. We can use the system to create the cherries too, which are basically just giga pellets. Instead of 10 points, they're worth 20 points. I know, they're insane. Oh, and it's not actually going to be cherries because apparently geese eat berries and worms and other things, so I'll just create a bunch of different sprites and have the sprite be randomised, so it's a little bit cooler, I guess. Okay, so it's now for the part that I was dreading, the ghosts. You see, the ghosts means implementing AI, and if you look at Pac-Man, the AI is actually pretty smart. All the different ghosts have different AI systems, but... I'm not gonna lie, I don't want to do that, so I'm just gonna create one simple AI and just use that for all the ghosts. Because who cares, it's my project. Before that, I feel like we should figure out what the enemy should be, so... After some googling, I figured out that the arch menaces of geeses is coyotes. Plus a few other things, but coyotes sounds cooler. Okay, so it's been about four hours, and I actually got an AI working that follows the player, and it's not buggy or anything. Here's how it works. I started by creating an entity for the ghost, just like I have for all the other things I've created so far. I then gave the ghost a target position of where it needs to travel to. In this case, it's simply the player's position. Now, I could leave this as it is, but if I did, the ghost would move diagonally. 
as it would simply take the quickest route towards the player. So instead, we needed to follow the grid structure that the game has. And to do this, we basically need to be checking the ghost's X and Y position against the player's X and Y, and seeing if it's smaller or larger, and based on that we can redirect it and alter the position to make it follow the grid. Here's what that looks like. Okay, so we have now made it to the section where we need to create all that bullshit I talked about. So I created a new main menu that will appear when loading the game up, and I also created a game over screen. And talking about game over, I made it so that colliding with the ghosts slash coyotes makes you lose. I also ended up implementing some sounds, but they are really annoying, so I just mute the game every time I launch it. Huh, <laughs> what a waste of time. I also created an animation system for all the entities, all it does is it takes the textures we supply it with and loops through them. Finally, I also redid the collision system as it was a bit all over the place, I shall say. It's pretty simple, we just check the player's position against the entities and do different things such as kill the player, collect the entity or just prevent the player from moving. Oh, actually I also implemented a simple high score system and that basically finishes the game. Now I could go back and make the UI look nicer because it is just some plain text, but I don't want to, I'm not gonna lie, I don't think it's necessary. And overall, the game turned out pretty cool, to be honest. I won't do anything with the game and I'll probably just leave it hiding in a folder somewhere, but it was fun. So um, that's the end of the video guys, if you liked it please subscribe and you know, leave a like, and suggest what other languages, frameworks and things I should do on this channel to make stuff I guess. And I'll see you guys next time, bye!